Welcome to The Drawing Zoo. I'm Brittany Roger, and today I'm showing you how I draw the corn snake. This video focuses on patterns. First, we will do a warm up, then meet the animal, then draw the animal. I will be using a pencil and paper, but there are a lot of other materials you can use in this activity. If you're new to the drawing zoo, I suggest you start with a video about shape or line, which I will link to in the description. So I would like to focus on patterns we can find on animals. I will be demonstrating many patterns. It may not fit all on one page. Let's begin with stripes over here. I'm starting off as simple as possible with straight up and down stripes. For a little fun, I'm changing between thick stripes and thin stripes. These are stripes that we might see on a garter snake. There are also stripes that are a little less regular. I'm doing curved lines this time. What animal does it remind you of? Tiger! Zebra! Over here, I'm doing spots. What shape do you think I'll start with? Round. Circles. Very good. These circles or spots remind me of a cheetah. Very similar is a type of spotting called rosettes, which both leopards and jaguars display. I cluster sloppy looking spots together in the shape of a U. The last type of spot is much more irregular. It's a clumsier version of a circle, but it keeps repeating. We can see these spots on cows. Moving on to patterns that are more geometric. To accomplish a checkerboard pattern, I am starting with some straight lines as best I can. Then I go across those lines with more straight lines. It made squares. Good observation. The tricky part is filling in every other square. Filling in gets me distracted, so sometimes I plan ahead and put a little dot in each square that I know I need to fill in. Remember, you can always pause the video and try it as many times as you need. Some snakes have it on their belly, while other snakes have it on their back. Speaking of snakes, there's this really cool one from Africa that has a crazy geometric pattern down its back. The, the Gaboon, Gaboon Viper. Viper. It's a rectangle, two triangles, rectangle. And I shade, 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 shade. Boy howdy, I went a little crazy filling this in. That was fun. Just like we did a clumsy, wacky version of a circle, I wanted to see what that would look like, but square version. These kinds of spots are found on a giraffe. Take a break if you need to, cause this last type of pattern is a doozy. And it's my favorite. Spirals. Spirals. To make a spiral, you start out like you're going to draw a circle, except you draw around it. That is pretty fun. Starting from the beginning of the line, I make shorter lines that connect to the outside. This looks like some snail shells. Another spirally animal is a millipede when it curls up. Instead of starting from the center, I leave space in between each new little line. This shows that the body has segments. And then I gotta add all the legs. The last kind of spiral I'm thinking of starts out with the letter J, but I keep going and retracing my steps until the lines connect. And then I have fun drawing some zigzags inside my swirly J shape. Let's turn this around and show you a ram horn. 
That was a great warm up. Now let's meet the animal. This is Kobe the corn snake. I am so excited about this video. I love snakes, but Kobe has a special place in my heart. He has been our family pet for 22 years. 22? Yes, 22 years. I never thought about how long a snake could live. Is he old? Kobe is an adult. He is full grown. In the wild, they usually live for eight years, but if they're cared for very well, they can live well over 20. What kind of wild do they live in? Good question. I'm not even sure if we can do the habitat guessing game with this guy. These animals can live in so many different habitats. They can live in open areas like grassy plains, in hardwood forests. They can live in urban areas. They can live in developed agricultural areas. In fact, they get their name corn snake because they so heavily camouflage in cornfields where they like to hunt. In nature, camouflage is when an animal has the same patterns, colors, or textures of their surroundings or habitat to help them hide. His belly looks like the corn. Exactly. This snake and others like it live all over the U.S. from Texas to Maine. Many people confuse the corn snake with the copperhead. Huh? There are 27 snake species where I live in Maryland. Snakes from the same area are easy to confuse because very similar colors and patterns help them camouflage and help keep them alive. Oh. This is a non-venomous species. It is a type of rat snake, which is a type of constrictor. There are so many types of snakes and there's actually like a snake family tree sort of a thing. Um, maybe I'll share it and that can help understand how this guy can be a constrictor, but he's not a boa constrictor and he's certainly not venomous. All constrictors are non-venomous. Scientists like to break everything into two categories, living and non-living. Under the living category, there are animals, plants, fungi, and bacteria. Under the category animal, we have spines and no spines, which means backbone or no backbone. In the category of animals with spines, we have reptiles, mammals, birds, and fish. Under the category reptiles, we have snakes, lizards, turtles, tuatera, and crocodilians. Under the category snakes, we have colubrids, boas, pythons, vipers, and elapids. Colubrids, boas, and pythons are all non-venomous snakes, also known as constrictors. Vipers and elapids are venomous snakes. Corn snakes and snakes like them are all colubrids. He is a constrictor, but he doesn't constrict me. He constricts prey. Ah. That makes sense. What do you think he eats? Camouflage is important so that prey and predators have a hard time seeing him. And look. Oh gosh, I just love him so much. Can you name what pattern we see on his belly? Square? Checkerboard! Very good. The spaced out black squares make a checkerboard. I never get sick of this. These are called saddle marks because it looks like the saddle pad people put on horses. It's a type of spot. I think we're ready to draw the animal. I am leaving room on my paper to draw two snakes side by side. I'm keeping the body of the snake very simple, a slightly curved line that I give a triangly pointy tip to 
and then I retrace the whole line back to the beginning and round it off before I connect it. I am drawing this snake from above so I can see their little round eyes. A scientific artist would call this the dorsal view. While some snakes do have perfectly round heads, Kobe's is a little longer than what I did in my drawing, so I'm going to stretch it out a little bit before I draw that tongue. Before I get caught up in the pattern, I am making sure I draw my next snake the same way as before, but this one is going to be from underneath, also called the ventral view. From this angle, I'm looking at the belly and would not be able to see the eyes. Now I am ready to fill in the pattern or saddle marks on the top of my snake. I leave a little bit of blank space behind the head and then I start drawing those really fun blobby spots one by one, leaving a very small space in between each. These saddle marks or spots get smaller as we get closer to the tip of the tail. Remember that blank space near the head? This is going to be a little tricky. I draw a really long spot with two little spots inside of it. Great work, everyone. Now we're going to work on the belly or ventral view. All snakes have something called ventral scales or belly scales that help them slither or move. I draw these belly scales with quick, short, straight lines from the neck all the way down to the tail. All of these lines created little rectangles and I can make them squares by shading them in only halfway. And while I do want to fill in opposite sides of these rectangles, take a look at how not perfect the real belly is. Since the real life checkerboard pattern is imperfect, that means we can have a lot of fun when creating our own checkerboard pattern on our snake. I like coloring in three squares in a row before I go opposite. That took off a lot of pressure. How much fun can you have creating your own unique checkerboard pattern? Yeah. Ta-da! You just did the dorsal and ventral views of an animal, just like a scientific artist. Let's look at some more artwork. Great dorsal view. Fun new patterns. Great habitat. Whoa, look at all the layers. I hope you enjoyed learning about this cool animal. Subscribe to this channel for more animal art activities. There are 27 snake Carmelo, sit down. Sit. Stop making noise. No, Sam, you're doing great. You're a good boy. People ask all the time if he bites. He hasn't bitten me ever, ever, ever. My dad swears that Kobe bit him when he was a baby. I mean, when Kobe was a baby, not when my dad was a baby. <laughs>